Hey guys, what's up? Nobody here, and this is going to be a precursor video to the finale. So in this episode, it's going to be a little bit longer than the rest of the uh, Let's Plays or the rest of the uh, series by about five minutes max. So we're going to be hitting about 20 minutes. But in this episode, we're going to be wrapping up all of the missions and the last three of the modern era bosses. Um, and this mission in Crisis City is one of the more annoying ones, if I'm being honest. The uh, one with Blaze um, having to press Y to put out all the fires. Um, you can also use her to attack minions, but uh, having her put out the fires sometimes doesn't always work because she doesn't always uh, hit the ones that you're going for, or the ones that you want her to. Or sometimes she'll attack minions, which is kind of annoying, but I mean, you know, whatever. Um, it works. I got through it. Uh, not as annoying as the one with Rouge, because it kind of homes in. Instead of basically being whichever direction you're looking in, it like she like homes in on the whatever fire pillar or enemy you happen to be near. So it's it's easier to control. That uh, <laughs> that doesn't make it uh, still a fun gameplay mechanic though. It, it's kind of annoying. It, it all just basically serves to slow you down. And force you to, you know, gimmick your way through the uh, levels. Which, it, I mean, you know, whatever. It, if that's what they want to do, fine. But, um... I can't help but point out when it uh, makes the gameplay more tedious as opposed to, you know, fun. This would be one of those moments. <laughs> also, uh, getting over here is kind of hard. You don't have to put out that fire pillar, but it seems like they're kind of incentivizing you to do that. But once you uh, clear that, you don't even need to hit the top pillar. You just need to kind of like jump up and tap the uh, ring and you're done. So yay us, we got through this one. But if you thought this was hard, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <coughs> so um, to preface this next mission, uh, I, uh, was unaware that the hardest mission in the game was apparently Vector's. So stupid me decided to go up for Vector's mission. And Jesus Christ, what a pain in the ass. Oh my God. You know, at the time, maybe Vector, but now I don't know. So the object is you just want to keep homing attacking uh, the uh, beat or the music note you want to keep homing attack it uh, and it'll go into a certain pattern each time and um, at first it's a little unclear what exactly it's trying to get you to do is it just trying to get you to hit the homing or is it just trying to get you to hit the notes without messing up or does it want you to do it in a certain time frame and I figured out that yes it does want you to do it in a certain time frame it wants you to do both <laughs> which is kind of a pain in the ass um, at least, okay, oh, it's a major pain in the ass. Who am I kidding? It is unfair to expect people to be able to do this this quickly. Oh, Jesus Christ. And with a time limit. Like, I mean, you only have to do it through the three. You only have to hit the uh, gold or the blue, then it goes gold, then it goes red, and you only have to do these three. And Sonic does homing attack from basically the moon, so, I mean, you can hit it anywhere, but... Keeping up and making sure that you can homing attack it is kind of hard because in order to get it to homing attack you have to uh, be above it and when it decides to land on the elevated platforms or when it decides to curve around platforms it can be kind of hard because if you homing attack you might smack into the wall. So just because you can lock onto it doesn't always instantly guarantee that you're going to be able to uh, successfully repel the note. But the quickest way to do it is just get as close as you can and don't spam homing attack, but make sure that when you do homing attack, you can hit it. Because if you spam homing attack, you're more likely to miss. It's just, just the way it is. <laughs> and now we finally come to the uh, Planet Wisp boss key. Uh, where it was, I, I, I'm having trouble finding the uh, character mission. <laughs> Because I'm not that smart. You see, it's it's up there, but you just you, you just you're not smart enough to go up there now, are you? C 
Come on. Come on past me. Let's get up there. Ugh. Sheesh. Watching me platform is an embarrassment to platforming kind. At least when I'm not paying attention. When I am paying attention, it's less of an embarrassment and more of just a cringe show. But hey, look, Charmy B. Uh, I hate this mission too. So the whole gimmick with this is you press Y and Charmy creates a uh, platform for you to stand on out of wind. It's not really annoying until you realize that if you mess up when you press Y, you have no way to cancel the platform early, so you're kind of stuck waiting for the platform to die. And if you're a klutz like me, that can leave you in some uh, painful situations. Especially if you're not paying that much attention. But if you do manage to uh, get it down, it's a pretty easy stage to run through. It's just... If you fuck up and press uh, Y and create a platform when you're not ready, or not ready for it, or don't need it, and trap yourself in a part of the level that you don't want to be in, it can be kind of a pain in the rear end. Um, also, another small benefit is uh, when you press Y, you get like an additional jump, like a little extra boost, which can help you uh, with some extra platforming. But um, it's uh, it's not that useful. Like, it, it's neat, but it's not, like, you know, like, perfect. Yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, uh... It's just not interesting, I guess. I don't know, creating platforms just... Eh. It's kind of boring. Like, and it's... Yeah, it is, makes a Sonic game vertical and it gives you an excuse, but again, I just... I feel like it's just an excuse to slow down the gameplay. Like, I know, it's... It, I, I know. I've said that a lot and I complain and I know I'm a terrible person because I think that Sonic gameplay should be fast when even the Mania style gameplay can be slow, but... I just don't like purposely forcing you to be slow by making you go upwards through platforms for no reason. It just feels like it's forced platforming, when Sonic can just easily run up the side of the wall and keep going. Like, you need to make the platforming dynamic to Sonic, you don't need to make Sonic conform to the platforming. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to get across, but we have collected all of the keys, and you know what that means? That means we get to fight the boss. And we're not going to be doing that this in the next episode. We're going to be doing that right now. As soon as we get the key. Which is down here. Away from every single gate. Because I want to make you find it. Because Sonic's a fucking treasure hunting game. <laughs> I'm nitpicking. And I'm, I'm being hyperbolic. I don't really care. But <laughs> it was just something funny that I thought I'd make a joke about. And now we get to fight the boss. Who is the boss? Well, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious it's Eggman, isn't it? I mean, the remix of E-G-G-M-A-N is just kind of great. <laughs> or at least the fact that they acknowledge, or at least the fact that they acknowledge the song, because that's my favorite Eggman theme. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the Egg Dragoon was the final boss of Sonic Colors, right? I think? Like I said, I didn't meet Sonic Colors. And honestly, this boss feels kind of unnecessarily long to me too, but <laughs> that's just me. So um, if you want to attack the boss, you can get him... Uh, 
uh, honestly the best way to attack him and the only way to attack him that I found that you can do with any level of success is to make sure that you hit the grind rails every time you pass them. Because I'm pretty sure that's the only way you can attack him when you're in the 3D section of the modern boss battle. When it converts to 2D, it's a very much uh, just run and jump, time your jumps. Really easy. Really simple. Takes forever. He jumps, he uh, traps you between these two giant walls. You want to wall jump up to the top. Once you get to the top, homie attack into his head and keep going. And try not to get hit by the ice cannon. I'm assuming that's an ice cannon. He says freeze, so... I mean, I, I guess it could be a diamond cannon where, you know, he fires like diamonds and they solidify into rocks. I should have made that. <laughs> Also, we need rings. And now we have rings. And my jumping is still terrible. I don't want to freeze, Eggman. You know what? I took the ice blast, but at least I made it to the first jump so I can get on the rails, so I can dodge the drill, so I can get to the launch ring, so I can finally homing attack Eggman, and I have no idea how many hits he takes. What is it, like six, seven, eight? I'm gonna go with eight. Maybe a hard six. I'm not sure. I'm not perfect. I don't think many people are. Ugh. This boss fight drags out for so long. Why? Oh, hey, look, you actually can attack him. I forgot you can do that. He actually does give you a small window to attack him. And now you have the third section of this boss fight where you are diving down from the sky and your only objective is to dodge the drill. You can basically dodge it by holding X and moving slightly with the control stick. And, you know, not getting hit. That would tend to help. And once you get right close to the chest, you can homing attack straight into it for some extra damage. You can hit the weak point for massive damage. <laughs> That's a classic meme. Ugh. Come on, Eggman, your time has come. I don't want to be skewered. I just want to win. Come on. Come on! I hate the separation attack. Normally, you're not able to hit him when he does that. I don't know why I was able to. <coughs> but now we're down into the falling part. One more time. And now we're gonna hit him. Come on, come on, come on. So close, so close. Don't get hit. Damn it, Sonic. Attack Eggman! I think that was six hits. And now we've beat Eggman. We have cleared all the bosses and all that remains, well, all the Eggman bosses, kind of. It's, okay, we have two more to go, shut up. <laughs> but we did get the Cyan Chaos Emeralds, so, uh... Ooh, I can't believe this! I was supposed to beat you this time! Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't get that memo. I beat you every time. No, seriously. We beat this guy every time. It's like it's our job or something. What's Eggman even doing here? I thought you said he'd been kidnapped by that big weird thing that sent us all to this place. Uh, Young Tails? That's not how that works. <laughs> and now we pan over to the reveal of the final stage. With all the broken gears. And now we have the Scion Chaos Emerald. 
which just leaves us with one more to collect. And we've saved the worst for last, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, furries of all ages. It's time that we fought the telekinetic trunks hedgehog from the future. Assuming I can land on the bounce spring. It's time to fight Silver! Trunks the Hedgehog! So, um... Just a small question. Uh... If... The Sonic 06 timeline was erased from the timeline from Sonic 06... Did Silver get displaced from time from this game and that's now why he's in Sonic Forces? Like... Is Silver now permanently stuck in the present? Is, is that how that works? Or was he born in the present? Or because that future is not going to happen, Sonic's timeline adventure screwed with the ability for... I, I missed my chance to attack, holy crap. Or because ti Sonic's adventure through the timeline screwed with the ability for, say, or for Silver to be born in the future. So the timeline corrected by having him be born in the past. I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to stop speculating and hope that I make sense to someone. Sega, why won't you pure my please? This is not how the game is supposed to work. Silver, let me hit you. And so, Silver's pretty easy to deal with. You just have to avoid everything he throws at you and homing attack everything he picks up. Like, out of every boss fight, I would say he's... He's harder than Shadow. He's more annoying than Mecha Sonic. But he's still not hard. He's the easiest for me. I don't know, pattern recognition is something I'm okay with. Like, it's something I'm, I guess you could say even, I would dare to say it's something I'm good at. And Silver is very much pattern recognition at its very core. It's Metal Sonic is too, but the more patterns, the more distinct the pattern, the easier it is to deal with. Ugh. And now, oh, no, not yet. We only have one more attack from Sil- or one more time to hit Silver before he does his really cool thing. Yeah. Congratulations, you can shoot Psychic Blades, but um, I have a question. Why don't you just try shooting a one that's, you know, horizontal and diagonal together? So it covers four angles as opposed to just the two? Or two sides as opposed to just the one? Like, that would make the most sense to me. I would think. Maybe not to you, but it would to me. Sheesh. Finally! And now he gets to do his really, really cool thing. Well... He, he calls it Meteor Smash. I call it Dirty Spirit Bomb. Because, I mean, you know, that, or, uh, that's, that's basically what it is. It's Dirty Spirit Bomb. <laughs> but, you homing attack into Silver, he gets taken out by his own massive attack, and you are left victorious. With an S rank. Because S ranks are easy to get if you can get a perfect bonus. But again, S-Ranks are like stupid easy to get in this game. But with that, guys, we now have all the Chaos Emeralds. And on the next and final episode 10, we will be taking on the Time Eater boss as Supersonic. And until then, I'm Nobody, and I'll see you next time.